How are you guys doing? My name is Jade and I am the owner of Featured Creatures. Welcome to our channel. Today I'm going to start off with this video of actually how to make a bioactive enclosure. I'm going to be doing a 10 gallon tank. So this enclosure did already use and I took all the dirt out. Uh, I had to change it out because it's been there for about six months to a year. Um, so I am breeding out of here as well. But I do like having an enclosure to breed some of my isopods out of just so I can put it next to my bed in my room. Um, so this one already does have charcoal in it. The only things that you really need to do to have a bioactive enclosure is actually obviously have a tank. I use charcoal for mine at the bottom, but you guys can use like bio balls or something else just to fill up that space to allow the water to drop through the soil. So I'll get you guys some close ups in a second. But if you guys are if you guys are using charcoal or bio balls, what I like to do put under that is make it all even, of course. But then I have window screen mesh literally just the same screen mesh that you would put in your window and I cut it to size so I'm just going to put that in there right now so that's just the start of it this does allow for the springtails to go through onto the onto the charcoal so they will be breeding on the charcoal as well then I'll actually be showing you guys my mixture of uh, my mixture of substrate that I like to put in for my enclosures so I'm just going to describe it I do have sphagnum moss in here. It is organic topsoil. I do put my leaves in here as well. As you guys can see, I have my leaves all sprinkled in there. And that's just the, the leaves that are gonna be in the substrate. So when the isopods do go in there and the spring cells as well, they will go ahead and eat the leaves in there and break those down as well. So what I do have right here is like I said, a perfect mixture. The sphagnum moss does aerate the soil. So it allows a lot of air in. So the soil is nice and healthy throughout the whole time that the enclosure is uh, is you know working is put together and uh, the sphagnum moss just allows for a lot of springiness and just no matter how much the dirt packs down it allows for that dirt to just stay springy and airy uh, and have a lot of air in it so none of the animals get hurt and it's all healthy for the plants and for all the animals I do put in there so as you guys can see I do have a 10 gallon tank the only things that you guys need is obviously like I said the tank the either the bio balls or the medium that you're going to put underneath for the water then you got to put a little later divider which i use a window screen mesh and then you got to have your substrate you can really choose what type of plants that you guys want i'm using i have it right down here just some regular golden pothos plants this wasn't a tank before um, but they did start uh dying slowly so that's why i want to put new soil in there just new nutrients in there um but yeah so let me go ahead and fill this up real quick So we're going to go ahead and fill that up, just put that across the top layer. I don't press down too much because it will end up doing that over time anyways. Right now it is raised up just because it is nice and springy as you guys can see. I can press down a lot but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave the air in the soil and let it do what it does by itself. So I do have springtails already on the charcoal because like I said, I did use this uh, tank before. I just took it apart. Um, so there are springtails in there. I'm just going to let them breathe before I do put any isopods in there. I'll make a video. Uh, please leave a comment down below of which isopods I should put in there. I have around 24 different species now. A lot of the, a lot of the normal species like the, the clowns, magic potions, zebras, dairy cows, milkbacks. Um, Oreo crumbles, just a lot of those type of species as well. So you guys can go ahead and pick which species you guys want me to put in here. I am looking for something a little bit more colorful and active. So if you guys know the perfect species, let me know. And if I don't have it, I definitely will be getting it for you guys. But um, yeah, so here's the, the mixture. I'll be showing you guys that, uh, that little clip right now of how it looks. And then I do have extra leaves right here. And we'll be putting on the top when I'm done. But for now, I do have a few pieces of cork bark picked out of what I do want to use. So I am going to be changing it around just a little bit. And some different sticks. So obviously, I have this piece of cork bark right here that I'm going to use. This one is the one that I had in there before. So I do like this one just because it does go across the full tank. So it allows for a little bit of height to be used in the tank. I'm just digging in a little bit right there put it more towards the back side. 
just because the side towards me is actually the front side of the tank. So I'm gonna flip it around so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I do like how that is. I'll show you guys a little close-up of that as well. And I'm just gonna put this, it has nice space on the inside of this cork fork, so I'm gonna dig this one just a little bit down, just to allow for any isopods that wanna hide in there or any of those spaces, they can, they can burrow in there. It's a nice, another hiding spot, as well as they're gonna hide in the leaves. So then these can just be placed around. Alrighty, so that's how I like, that's how I'm going to have this tank set up. I might change it around depending on if I like it or not uh, after a while. But for now, what I'm going to do is actually replant the plants in there. As you can see, there is some still some of the old, other dirt, but that's not too bad. So these plants are going to take a little bit of a beating. Since this one's longer, I'm going to plant it towards the back. These plants are gonna take a little bit, they're gonna have a little bit of an adjustment period. Now, obviously the newer your plants are and the healthier that they are from the start, the better it is. But I have done really well with these plants before and they don't, they haven't harmed any of my isopods before. And that's why I'm still gonna be using them now. Um, just let them regrow a little bit more then they'll be perfectly fine in there. And then I like this one just because I have been using this plant for a while, this pothos for a while. Um, I do plan on getting more plants to put in here just to fill up some space. But for now, this plant is now planted. And for each and every plant, I want to just put a little bit of water. If you guys are looking for a sprayer like this one, this one you can go to Menards or Home Depot or even Walmart might not have them just because it's not in that season, but Menards or Home Depot definitely has that garden center um, that where you can buy one even now when it's winter. So, I'm just gonna go put that one there. Get a few more pieces. Like I said, these plants are gonna look like they're dying because they are, um, but definitely going to rejuvenate them and you guys are gonna see them in the next few videos as we really get this tank reestablished. Um, these plants were just left sitting out of the dirt a little too long, but got a little busy because of Thanksgiving and you know family stuff. So that is the only time I've ever really let any plants die that I could, that I could have controlled definitely not going to do that next time but i do have a nice garden center that year round is growing photos so i can go buy some more but it's okay because if these plants do die you already know the ice pods will take care of it so those are just the two plants i'm going to have in there for now and then i'm just going to add some of this leaf litter as you guys can see i do pick this out from my own yard and then i boil it the way I like to sanitize mine is by boiling. So all of these leaves have been boiled and dried. I'll show you guys that little setup in a second. But yeah, and then after that, all you have to do is just give it a nice spray. And this is just the basic customization of the tank. Obviously, you can pick out the different pieces of wood that you may like. I just picked out the piece that I like, just because it does add some height to it. But I do plan on doing this with another 45, 40 gallon tank. And if you guys can see the 65 gallon tank right here, I do plan on doing this exact thing. So I am gonna be getting bigger pieces of cork bark, spider wood, and so. And I'll show you guys how this 30 gallon tank looks. Um, I think this is probably one of the best ones that I've done. I did do a 40 gallon that I did sell to a client. I'll post that picture up right now. It should be either in the corner or I'm gonna cover the whole screen with it. But um, yeah, so this is how this tank does. I do have a 24 hour timer on it and I have an anole in here with my blue powdered isopods, um, you know, fast reproducing so that Noel can eat them as well as me feeding him, of course. But overall, let me show you guys how this tank looks. 
This tank is looking pretty nice. Obviously these plants are going to get redone. There we go. These plants are gonna get redone and start growing a little bit more, but they started dying off. But I'm okay with that because I will plant more when I do get more. But like I said, this mixture right here is just mixed with sphagnum moss. As you guys can see. Sphagnum, I did grab majority of it to already toss in the tank, but these are like, as you guys can see, all this sphagnum moss that I did have in here. That's how I do like to have my tanks. You guys can see it in this 30 gallon bioactive enclosure. I do have my knoll right over there, as you guys can see. So yeah, this is my enclosure. This is my 30 gallon tank with my Featured Creatures logo sticker right there. I just, like I said, I do feed my isopods. These are, this is gonna be an upcoming video. I do feed my isopods on the Vivarium and the Mist products. So I'm gonna be testing those out on my blue powdered isopods to show you in the next video. But for this one, this is what this enclosure is going to look like. This is my full bioactive setup. These plants have done nothing but thrive in here since I put them in there two to th two months ago now. So I did the exact same thing in this one where I have the charcoal at the bottom, the window screen mesh with the dirt on top. I do have earthworms in this one, so that is gonna be the only difference right now. I might add earthworms to this one this time around, um, just since I won't have to change it. I know a little bit more what I'm doing than when I set it up about eight months ago. So I'm gonna be adding earthworms to this one. Uh, I do have a dubia roach in there. It looked like it wasn't doing too well. Oh, he's actually right here. So that's the dubi one dubia roach I have. I don't know if he's alive, but uh, the springtails and the ice pods will get to him if he ends up passing away. So I am gonna put more, some more stuff like some uh, super worms and some other little roaches and insects in there, just so the anole has something to eat, as well as the ice pods and springtails. Um, so yeah, this is how you set up a basic um, enclosure on the cost of everything. I paid for this pothos plant, which came with a lot more. Actually, all that that's in that tank was actually one pothos plant. That's how much it's grown. I paid $15 for it from uh, where I'm at for that one plant. And uh, these two pieces came with it as well. Or actually, not, sorry, not these two pieces. These two pieces came from another time where I bought some and I had another tank that I gave to a friend. So I just had these two or three pieces left and I just decided to put them in this tank eight months ago when I did create it. So this is how you do it. This cork bark would cost anywhere between, depends on where you go, uh, maybe 10 to $12 per pound. Um, really this entire tank would cost you buying the, buying the uh, ingredients or the stuff for it. All of the products for it is gonna be under $100 for sure. Um, but getting the tank with it depends on which tank that you get and where you get it from. I definitely would say this build was around $100 or less. So if you guys are interested in a build like this, if you guys have any more questions, please just let me know. Reach out to us on Facebook or on Instagram or even TikTok at Featured Creatures. And then I can't wait to see you guys there. So I can't wait to answer some of you guys' questions. Please like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Uh, this is the first video on our channel, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.